Ah, happy Sunshine family. It is 9.49 p.m. Sunday, September 24th. Huh, I guess I need to change the date on OBS Studio here. You guys can't quite see it yet, but I can. And now you can. DG has showed up for her post again. Here's a good girl. All right, well, this has been an interesting weekend for me with information coming across my radar to have to process. I've been going over a lot more of what Matthew Short is this guy's name, the Malicious Citizen First Responder, the Show Me Baby channel, and we talked about that in a prior video. Uh, you should all check out Victorious Libertas's interview with them. It's about 50 minutes long, and it really gives some information that while I personally can't verify this right now, it's it feels like it has the ring of truth to me, and it's important to get this information out to everyone. It looks like we've got quite an operation going on in Houston and I'm just not sure what to label that operation and what the purpose of that operation is but there's some sinister reports of really dark activities coming out of Houston and out of Port Charles with FEMA barges that look like they took a federal penitentiary with razor wire and all and dumped it on a barge Ah, uh, what kind of a world do we live in, guys? This is really crazy. <sighs> well, let's head over and... Oh, oh, you know what? Actually, in this video here, they talked about a particular walkie-talkie app that they were using so that they could get supplies and they were outperforming every federal level agency as far as getting supplies to those in need. Zello is the name of this app that the rescuers were using. It's a walkie-talkie app and you can s subscribe to different channels on there. So I've downloaded the app and We'll see if we can actually hear what's going on with some of the walkie-talkie uh, communications from the continuing efforts to help the people of Houston. So I wanted to point that out to everyone. Okay, now let's head over to IntelliCast. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to pop up the National Hurricane Center because we're going to find out what that other small cyclonic storm is that's out uh, east of Hurricane Maria. All right, so that is Lee. Okay. So Tropical Storm Lee or no, it's Hurricane Lee now. Uh, where? What are the winds? 90 miles an hour sustained winds category one. Okay. And they're saying that Maria is a Category 1 with 90 mile an hour winds. So in telecast, they've got motion back in, in the cloud pattern again. Maria is just moving about due north from where it was yesterday, from where I remember. Here we've got our interesting crop line. Doesn't look like any clouds over here by the UK are moving. They're, they're static. All right. It doesn't look, according to either the reflective radar or the satellite image, that we have much of a huge cyclone here. 
We're going to pull up windy.com and see what kind of wind speeds we have in the area. There's still something up here. This is very irregular. I don't know quite how to explain this big mass out here of, of weather. Let's see if we can get some wind speeds. <clears throat> 33 knots, 36 knots. What do we got down here for Maria? 45. <clears throat> Fifty knots, forty-eight, forty-nine. All right, so that's what Wendy says Maria is doing. Let's take a look and see what they've got going on for. Wow, that really zoomed out too far. There we go. Nineteen knots, <clears throat> thirty knots. All right, well, we have two systems out there still. Well, now for the real treat, let's head over to the composite radar feed. It's our family favorite here, the National High Resolution Reflectivity Composite Loop. We're really starting to get a lot of family participation on this Waging War with Weather series, and that's great. You know, weather really affects us all every day. Well, starting in the Pacific Northwest, we can see that the radars are all firing at the same time. They all come on, Seattle, Portland, Pendleton, and Spokane. And they're coming on in the same patterns that we've noted. Spokane is pretty spiky. Pendleton is irregular with pretty much the north-northwest areas firing. Portland, for the most part, is typical to the rest of the radar we've seen. There is some chunks that are taken out of the, what, the northwest side. And then the Seattle, every time I've looked at it, always has this southwest chunk missing. And I'm wondering if there's some coordination today with the Portland Tower. It seems the Portland Tower has got the <clears throat> the northwest chunk missing and the Seattle Tower has the southwest chunk missing. So I wonder what effect that has on the weather patterns. We've got some spikiness moving back and forth out here off of what is this the San Diego Tower. Texas we've got our spike here pointing up to the Northwest. It looks like it's blinking a little bit. In the center of the country, wow, guys, We've got storms and rapid vapor generation coming up uh, in Colorado and it's moving over Kansas and Nebraska. Oh, wow. Omaha looks like they are just getting absolutely pounded. Uh, looks like the radar tower in Omaha. Omaha, what is this, Council Bluffs area on the other side in Iowa? Uh, that radar is pretty intense, and so is this one here in southern Nebraska, right on the Kansas border. We've got our radar towers in North Dakota and South Dakota turning on. This is the same pattern that we've seen for a couple days now. This is the third iteration of this pattern, and we remember yesterday that huge... Well, I didn't know if I was to call it an atmospheric river or not. Um, that was just a term that I had heard from the past. Uh, check the comment section of that video. Somebody posted a definition of what an atmospheric river is. But what we had was a north or sorry, a south to north flow of moisture that just erupted and pretty much covered the entire northwest distance of the continental United States. Got an awful lot of spikiness that's coming on right at the end, the last few frames of this radar loop here off of the east coast. 
I don't quite know what that's about either, but I'm just noticing it, observing it, and we can file that away for later. Okay, let's head over to, oh no, I didn't transition over. Darn it, oh no I did, okay. All right, let's transition over to this. This is a new screen I've made in OBS. I've been getting quite a few emails from, well, you can see people all over the world about their experiences with the local weather. And so in my learning how to use OBS Studio a little bit more easily, I've got slideshows with the uh, photos that people are sending me. And we can see that we do have some very strange cloud formations that were captured in Spokane a couple days ago on the 22nd. And those come in uh, with special thanks to Brian A. of Spokane. And also an interested listener, uh, David H. in Ireland, was kind enough to send a bunch of photos throughout the morning of September 23rd between about 8.12 local time and 10.23 local time, if the timestamp in the camera was correct. Uh, that's the way the files were named with the date and time. And I want to say a special thank you to family members David H. and Brian A. for sending in their pictures of local on the boots on the ground weather observations in their locale. Well, we've just got a lot to talk about on this channel. I'm going to be starting a new series. As we make observations that seriously contradict the story that we've been given, we found that what that activity really is, is picking apart the deception. Finding that, wow, all these things we used to think are real are nothing but a lie. Misdescribed facets of our reality. And oftentimes, a general term that is used to describe one of these misdescribed facets of our reality is called the PSYOP, the P-S-I-O-P. It's to, it's to change our psyche and our perception somehow in order to elicit a change in behavior. That's pretty much what the purpose of a PSYOP is. And the PSYOP relies an awful lot on deception and trickery. And we've seen a lot of CGI and uh, faked events that pop up in the news. I don't know about the CGI so much, but the, the faked events, the staged fake mass violence that's popping up. If, if you haven't seen the documentary called We Need to Talk About Sandy Hook, well, then you're going to make an awful lot of observations in that documentary. And those are the observations <clears throat> that really helped fuel me to rewrite my own narrative of reality. And this series of videos that I'm going to put together, I'm going to call them the Self-Author Your Own Perception Series, or S-A-Y-O-P. Now, when you self-author your own perception, when you participate in the SAYOP, that is the antidote. That is your greatest tool against the PSYOP. Okay, family, I love you guys an awful lot. Thank you so much for all of the email and all of the participation. Uh, I'm really blown away. And a lot of great comments, a lot of love flowing. And this has brought me so much hope. I haven't done anything to market my channel. Uh, this, this channel is a little different than what you might be used to from other truth channels. <clears throat> this channel is just <clears throat> my personal journey of picking apart the deception. I talk about the observations that I make and I compare them to the story that we've all been given, the mainstream narrative. And this is kind of turned into a study group uh, of over 4,500 members now in the Lunacy family. And I really feel like it's about time to, to have another family meeting. Uh, I had one when 
I was just getting up around a thousand subscribers and then another one a week later at 2000 subscribers and I've really only been pumping these videos out at this particular rate uh, for about a month maybe maybe five weeks and so <clears throat> everything I put out is under a Creative Commons uh, license agreement <clears throat> information is light ideas that's light and we're light workers and to disseminate what is our truth our light is probably one of the most important things that we can do along our spiritual journey and so my channel is just my own personal collection of what I deem in the moment to be my light this is a peek into the real-time process of me, Danny, authoring my perception in the moment. And I have come up with my own language to talk about the particular facets of self-authorship of perception. And so the first few videos in this series is going to be to introduce you to my language of talking about just my terms and the way I view these different facets of our consciousness. So you should look forward to the first video in that series, probably coming this week sometime. All right, family, we're winding down on Sunday here. It is now six minutes after 10 p.m. Pacific time. We'll see what kind of observations are in store for us this week. If you've got any love, light, or links for me, please send them to lunacy at protonmail.com. That's L-U-N-A-S-E-E -E at protonmail.com. Peace out, guys. We'll see you really soon.